If you want to discover the secrets of what elite entrepreneurs and marketers did to achieve the next level of success, then this channel is definitely for you. Hey, I'm Daniel Das and I'm the coach and founder of Voice Warriors and I just want to thank you for clicking on this video. Voice Warriors Radio is where we interview these experts about their secret frameworks, strategies, tips and how we can implement it right away in our lives and business. So stay tuned till the end of this video because I have an awesome gift that I would like to give to you. Enjoy and I'll see you in a bit. So he was a college dropout with a six-figure student loan debt and having a negative amount in the bank when he just started off in his entrepreneurship journey. Since then, he has impacted thousands of entrepreneurs with his framework processes many and many more, right? He is the winner of the ClickFunnels Dream Car Award and he is a Two Com Club winner. And so without further ado, let us put our hands and give him a warm virtual Voice Warriors welcome for the one and only Doug Watson. Daniel Das, what's up my friend? What's going on? How are you today? All right, let's go. Could you just tell us a little bit about yourself in terms of what got you started in this whole online space? Maybe you could share on that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's funny. Uh, it's probably not like your 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 most stories, right? That people say. Um, I've always feel like I've been, and this is something that people always say. I think I've always been an entrepreneur, but it's true. Um, my first job was a, a paper boy. I had a paper route. Uh, by the end of the year, that first year I was fifteen. I was even like sixteen years old yet. I had uh, five paper routes. Me and my brother. We just kept on finding out who has the paper route next to us, and we're like, "Hey, do you want?" sell your paper route to us and we would bribe them somehow and, and take over that route for them. Um, and that kind of carried throughout high school and even college. Like I was selling haircuts in college, t-shirts, dollar fraternities and sororities, you know, um, my notes, like everything I could figure out how to do not to go to a job. <laughs> right. So um, after college, I dropped out my fifth year. I did a five year program at Jackson University and I left, went back to Connecticut from Philadelphia and mm -hmm. I started going door to door um, with that business. And it was a 100% commission job. So it's, you know, you, really what you put in is what you get out of it. So um, the idea was to take over an office, become a manager for that company uh, and run the Connecticut office. So things didn't always, you know, go according to plan. Um, and I ended up being in out of different sales roles in addition to working in the restaurants, uh, working at least three jobs, always had at least three jobs. And it was the intention to pay off that student loan debt. I took out $56,000 to go to Drexel. By the end of the five years, when I dropped out, um, basically I couldn't get a co-signer my senior year. Uh, that note more than doubled. I had $114,000 of student loans. One of the people that co-signed those student loans was my grandmother. We call her Nani. And she was getting behind on her. Um, her credit was dropping because of me, you know, and that didn't feel good. So she actually uh, approached me and said, hey, Doug, um, I've been introduced to this thing. You should come check it out. So my grandmother, believe it or not, brought me to my first ever network marketing meeting, which introduced me to this entire online world. And I'm no longer really involved in network marketing, but that was my start. And that was about over a little over a decade ago. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. And so so with that being said, right, what was the pivoting moment you knew that you have discovered your voice or discovered that this is the thing that you are going to do long term? When was that moment? Could you just share? Yeah. There's a few things there. Um, because honestly, even like when I left my job um, three years ago, it's been three years and, and one month, I left my full-time job as a waiter. So that was my last restaurant job. And even when I quit that job and, and took my online business full-time, uh, we had some amazing results come out quickly because, you know, when your back's against the wall and you have only one way to go, you're going that way, right? And it happened fast mm -hmm. for me. But even back then, when I first launched my course, I didn't commit to a year. Like, I didn't know this was going to be the long term. I'm just, I'm just going day by day, you know, week by week, maybe month by month. And uh, when you say finding your voice for the long haul, um, it took me some time to figure that out. But I remember distinctively the first time I went live on Facebook in one of my mentors' Facebook groups. There was something about it that made me super uncomfortable. I like broke out in hives. And I'm like, I'm never doing that again. Next day, I went live again. And I did that for 30 days just to get uncomfortable. 
and, and be comfortable with getting uncomfortable. So that really is what ignited me. Um, I started going live in my Facebook group, started building a community, started talking to my audience with where I was at. Like it was basically documenting my journey. Um, and then within 60 days, I hit dream car status, meaning I referred 100 people to click funnels. Um, I launched my first course and I made my first six figures online like by Mother's Day that year. So like within six months. And uh, that was because of finding my voice and, and having the courage to go live and be imperfect about it. Like I messed up, right? But I'm just going to keep it going. So those are the really things yeah. that come to mind. Um, as far as like making it long term, um, it probably wasn't until about a year later where I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm doing this thing. It's consistent and I don't see myself doing anything else anytime soon. This is it. So that's kind of, yeah, great question. I like that. <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, like, that's so true. I mean, your your, con your consistency, which I really see, right, with your publishing, what you publish online, and, and how you keep on going, that really helps you to discover your voice. And, and I feel like, you know, at the end of the day, we are still constantly discovering our voice throughout this whole journey of life right and and yeah and with, with that you you you, this, you know you knew that this is going to be long term and you just want to just keep on pushing forward that's amazing thank you for sharing yeah. that and guys if you are listening to this on uh, live or replay please make sure you take down notes because he is going to be dropping a lot and he has already dropped some golden nuggets right there go ahead and take those notes down <laughs> <laughs> so so with that being said right so you you right now you know you have achieved so much right and what is the one thing right entrepreneurs should avoid when launching their online business something they should avoid um i think a lot of people want to dive right in to paid traffic paid ads they want to go super fast they want to hire an entire team and from someone who's made those mistakes i would say it's not the best place to go um i think people like just get sold the dream and they think it's going to happen overnight and even three years ago, I had eight years of failures behind me. I'm not saying go eight, fail for eight years, but what could have solved that problem for me and got me to where I am sooner is absolutely hiring someone who's, who's already there, hiring a coach, a mentor, somebody that's already built what I'm looking to do or go that direction. Um, getting super clear on what it is I want to do and who I want to serve first. I think a lot of entrepreneurs dive in with an idea like a product to sell and it just becomes a commodity. And I think it's really about building an offer that serves a specific audience that you want to be known for serving in this world. And a lot of people stu uh, get stuck with that, you know, because uh, I see a lot of people. Um, most people will come to one of my trainings and be like, I want to learn how to sell. And then they're like, I don't have anything to sell. And then they're like, I don't even know who I want to help or who I want to serve. I'm like, okay, you got to go back a little bit and figure out before you start running ads and trying all the things is find something that you can absolutely grow into and, and go that way. So um, I think people just want to jump in right away without doing the work or, or discovering the message to the market that, they need, that they'd like to serve. Um, I think that's really the work that they have to put in first. Oh, that's just amazing that what you say right there is really true that uh, getting clarity on the who that you want to serve not just serving everybody but getting really crystal clear on that and that's that's really amazing thank you for sharing that and yeah. so we be, being a seven figure entrepreneur congratulations by the way again thank on you. your two comic club <laughs> being a seven figure entrepreneur right now so what is the habit or habits that you had to switch to achieve the results that you have now could you just maybe share the top three or maybe the top one habit that you had to switch? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's always a work in progress, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I think one of the biggest ones is not being scared to put yourself out there. Like that's what Voice Warriors is all about, right? Is not being afraid. Like there's people that, you know, make five figures a month. Sometimes they're getting to, you know, multiple six figure per year mark. Um, with just being consistent, but the the more courage you have to put yourself out there on multiple flip platforms or a consistent content strategy, you're going to have a lot more success. Everyone says it. Russell says it. Steve Larson says it. And it's so true is committing to a content strategy, even if it's inconsistent consistency, it's better than, than nothing. So for example, like I go live in my Facebook group every Thursday. 
I've missed a few Thursdays over the holidays and, and through getting sick, but like, I'm going to pick right back up like this week. So it's, it's okay to miss, but just stay consistent with that. So number one is putting yourself out there. Number two is consistency. Uh, and number three, it's really about trusting yourself and putting that trust into a team. Like I remember when I first started, I'm like, I'm going to hit the two comma club without a team. I'm going to be one of the first ones to do it alone. And, um, it was the worst idea I ever had. Like, what was I even talking about? Um, I now have a team. They're amazing. And it's a team that I believe could bring us to the eight figure mark. And if I didn't just trust myself to show up and do the work consistently and know what to do, how to do it, how am I going to ever expect to hire that first person or that next person to do that role? Right. So I would say those three things are vital to grown to six figures and then beyond to seven and even eight figures. That's just awesome. That's really, really awesome. You know, the three different habits that you have and and really you're just putting yourself out there and, and just pushing through and, you know, you're looking back at your past and right now that you have changed so much and and seeing you right now as well, you know, when we, we are going to the next one, like the challenges that you, you have at the moment, yeah. you, you, you've been just pushing out the challenges like crazy every month once and stuff like that because I noticed you're doing that. So should entrepreneurs launch a challenge when they are starting out or should they wait till a period of time and, and why so? Could you just share that? Yeah, it's, it's a great uh, question. And I've noticed, um, I'm not the first person to do challenges. I'm sure you've seen a lot of people doing challenges, but I, I do believe I'm the first person to do them a certain way uh, that really increases engagement, show up rates, and completion rates, meaning that they're going to see the offer when you make that offer during your challenge, if you're doing it the right way. Um, and we've seen massive conversions because of that. And I'm, I've, I've taught this on stage at Russell Brunson's Inner Circle. And I'm really excited to get this out there and show people what I'm doing because it's it's game changing. I think as entrepreneurs, we put so much energy into what we do online, our live trainings, our webinars, our uh, you know virtual events or our five day challenges, master classes, whatever you're doing. Um, and I think you know going back to the habits, one of the things I've asked myself uh, over the last few years is what worked this month, what didn't work, and let's do more of what's working. And soon as I could get to the point of doing more of what's working, which is five day challenges for my business, uh, we've been able to go from about 30 to $50,000 months to breaking six figure months because of this strategy and it's systemized. Um, I started doing my first challenge probably it was 2019. So about it's a little while ago, a couple of years ago. Um, and I did them free. Um, should someone start out doing a challenge right away? It's, it's really up to you. It depends on how, strong willed you are, how, how confident you are, because I'll tell you what, if you don't have an audience yet and you do a five day challenge and no one shows up, I don't care how strong you are. That's going to sting the heart a little bit. It's a lot of energy putting in. So I would recommend to grow an audience, whether it doesn't really matter the platform, but growing an audience is, is pretty cr crucial. And you don't have to have a massive audience. I've had clients that have launched a five day challenge to 25 people and had 18 people there on day five where they make an offer to invite them to their coaching program. And sold, you know, seven, eight of them at a five thousand dollar mark for twenty-five people, making nearly forty thousand dollars. It's pretty remarkable, right? So, if you have yeah. any kind of audience, I would say yes, absolutely, throw a five-day challenge. Um, it's it's something you're putting some energy into, but once it's built, you now have that asset in your business to either evergreen it or repeat it um, quarterly, every other month, or monthly, right? And then get to the point where you're doing as much as possible. Look at ClickFunnels. They run a challenge every two weeks, you know, but they have the infrastructure and the systems to support that. So start with uh, Man. step one. Yeah. And that's that's mic drop right there. Beautiful, beautiful answer. I love that. And especially when I remember the post that you you posted uh, we uh, when you on stage on Russell Bunsen stage and you're teaching to the inner circle. Man, that's mind blowing. Man, that's that's really cool. Crazy awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a shock to me. Um, there's over 100 entrepreneurs at that event. As you guys know, Russell's in a circle. We have a seven-figure uh, earner. And I felt like the newest person in the room. I, I literally was one of the newest people in the room. Um, and we had 35 tables of 10. They chose one person from each table to get entered into a vote. So I was one out of 35 at that point. Top seven got to go on stage. But 
because so many people are doing challenges. If you're watching this, you should be doing one too. Um, they were excited to see how can I increase my engagement rate, show up rate, um, and my completion rate of my challenge and get more conversions. So that was the topic and uh, something I love talking about. So Beautiful. That's, that's really amazing, amusing, whatever beautiful words <laughs> they can, hot diggity dog. Yeah, that's right there. <laughs> so from, you know, you have, you have achieved the Dream Car Award. You, you you hit six figure and you hit the two common club award and when it comes to doing things organically i know you're not a person of ads cold yeah. messaging so what is the first step an entrepreneur should take when they are finding leads yeah i think it's number one people are just adding i i know this i've been a part of groups and chats and things like that where it's like the goal is five thousand friends let's just max out our friends let's go add everybody and anybody and that's like I'm now paying for that literally a decade later when I was taught that and removing all these people from my past, you know, that I don't see me being aligned or as someone who fits my, who do I want to serve in this world? I'm going back and removing them now. So if you're starting out, it's really getting super intentional with who does it you want to be known for serving? What problem you want to be known for helping them with? And once you have that, really knowing exactly who that person is, what they look like, you know, what um, we have certain things we're looking for on their profile on Facebook, where if they don't have that, we're, we're not connecting with them. And the intention isn't just to sell everybody, it's to really make true connections. There's three types of connections we add, and it's usually people in the industry that we're in, right? Online marketing, business, um, digital marketing. And it's usually, you know, number one, people that I, can, I look up to that I want to grow with. Um, we call it Dream 100, call it Return on Relationships, whatever it is. Uh, number two are peers, people that are at my level, maybe a little ahead, maybe a little behind, that I want to grow with on this journey uh, in, in a collaborative manner, in a partnership, joint ventures, whatever it might look like. Um, and then people that I'm looking to serve, people that I know I can help who are where I was uh, eight, five to eight years ago trying to get started, and I know I could shortcut their path to success. And then once you find these people, it's not about cold messaging them. A lot of people are just going right into the DMs to sell them. Uh, if you have a Facebook group, you're probably being taught to dive into the DMs and get them on a call and sell them your program. And that's like the opposite of what I teach. Um, we want to have real relationships and connections and know we're in it for the long haul. And my uh, my goal is to really go value forward, as if you, I'm sure you've heard lead magnets and things like that. But we take it to another level and try to over deliver and serve in that first conversation or the first emails they're getting from us to send them into our free courses. And then once they see that and they know they can trust us and they love what I do, now they can go invest in one of my challenges. And we have six for them to choose depending on what path they're currently on in the journey, whether they're brand new and don't know who they wanna even help online, or if they're already at six or seven figures and wanna scale with systems and events, we have a path for them. So I think it's, understanding um, where are most your audience at, what path do you want to put them on and start with that one thing, right? And, and guide them up that value ladder. Wow, that's that's really brilliant. I mean, the, the way you, you structure and your processes and how it works and, you know, you started off with your challenges and right now you have over, I think, how many tells about like seven, six, seven challenges, right? That, that you have yeah, right we've, now. Yeah, we've tested so many last year. Um, I just wanted to find... <laughs> I would just basically ask my audience, like, hey, what are you stuck with? And they're like, uh, mm -hmm. I'm really stuck with offers. Okay, let's go into that. And I do my offers at Sell 5-Day Challenge. Then the next thing, they were like, well, um, I'm struggling with getting leads to my offer. I have my offer now. Thanks for helping me build that, but I need more leads. So we did attract more leads. And then people are like, I need to grow this thing faster without ads. Well, if you're not if you're doing organic marketing like I do, it's, it's all about content creation and repurposing, having a system on that. We have content that converts. Mm -hmm. And now they've got all these leads and an offer to sell them, but they have no idea how to sell. So all, um, Seven Figure Selling Secrets 5-Day Challenge was born. So I just kept testing these things. And now we found the winner of those. We're evergreening the, uh, the four or five of them right now. But we're going to take the one that worked best in 2021. And we're going to repeat it every single month this year. And now I'm look. I'm three years into this as a two comic club level, and I'm now just looking into the possibility of start to run ads. I've tested ads in the past and never really worked out. But now we found our message. It took us some time, but now I can flood this thing with traffic with the right people um, at the right stage of their their journey and 
have an amazing result based on the numbers that we've seen come through this challenge. That's just amazing. Guys, if you're listening to this, you know, Doug just gave you guys a lot of information, a lot of value, a lot of power bombs right there. And I hope you guys are taking down notes. And if you guys want to know more about Doug, Doug could you just share as well on your awesome Facebook group? Please share. Yeah, my absolutely. Audience. Yeah, check it out. Um, my Facebook group is called Sales Funnel Mastery, Five Ways to Monetize Click Funnels. Um, I started that group three years ago, mostly talking about tools and resources that you could use to start your own business but it's really evolved since then um mostly what we cover and my my curriculum for this year is we do free weekly trainings on the topics that are working best for my business so i'm giving you real time strategies and solutions uh organic marketing strategies and eventually as i get to pay up i start teaching what's successful and i'm just sharing real data real information uh every week and what's helping me grow my business and my future plans to grow that to a multiple uh, um, seven figure business. So yeah, check it out. If you guys want to check that out. Yeah, guys, I'll be leaving the link down in the comment. Trust Thank me, you. guys, this guy over here, this man over here has helped me sell my first meat ticket or some people may call it high ticket offer. So you can definitely put your trust in him because he's definitely there to serve you. And that's, that's something that really got my attention. So the, Thank you once again for this awesome time. Um, one final one. What are your final thoughts do you have to help the audience today or what final words that you want to leave with the audience today? Yeah, I think it really comes down to consistent and perfect action. And I think a lot of people get started like, look, guys, you know, three years in and I've had a website, but it's not something that I utilize much, but we're finally looking into building out like a professional brand and a website and a, like a logo like you don't need these things to get started and i think people get so caught up on the busy work and they want to be perfect and they have to plan everything before they even do anything but if you just start by documenting your journey uh, with live or audio or whatever your modalities maybe it's a blog it's, it's just starting one thing stay on one path right one platform with one message with one offer and do that until you're able to hire one person to take things off your plate and learn to trust yourself to delegate. And that thing, you'll blink and a few years will pass and you'll have a team of 10 people working with you to grow your mission and your vision. So start with just you, start with one platform, start with that one message and that one offer and just stay consistent and, and do it perfectly every single day. Hey, Daniel here again. And I just want to thank you for watching this video. And like I promised, I would like to give you an awesome gift. But before that, did you know the fastest way to reach the next level in your online business is not by cracking your head for ideas, going live every day on social media and all that. The fastest way we discovered is by interviewing experts that are in the niche that you're in. What I mean by that? Have you heard of this phrase where your network is your net worth? I'm sure you did, but if you have not, hear me out for a second. The real question is, how do we connect with these elite entrepreneurs and marketers? It took me a while to understand this, but with a lot of researching and studying, I finally discovered that most of them have this one pattern in common. Most of them started their entrepreneurship journey by asking or interviewing experts before they became one. And that's why having an interview show is so powerful. It does not only connect you with these experts, but it also builds your authority, trust, and credibility with your audience. And they will be willing to buy your offer without hard selling. Amazing, right? So here is my awesome gift to you. If you're looking to connect with your dream experts with a powerful interview show, I have this special short training that will help you with all the strategies that you need to launch one. All you have to do is click the link in the description and that will direct you to my free group where the free training is. Over there, you'll be able to connect with me and ask me any questions that you have and also join me in live interview session that is ongoing every single month. You will be able to find other free trainings that are in there that will help you in your entrepreneurship journey as well. Hope you enjoy it and I can't wait to see you in there. Once again, thank you so much. Till the next one, I'm Daniel Das, signing up.
Goodbye for now.